Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Gadget Nation with me, Adam Carruthers. We're back here at Renoma Cafe Gallery for yet another Nokia special. Now, this time we'll be focusing more on what's the biggest and the baddest phone in the market from Nokia. I'm talking about the Lumia 925. More on that later on, but just a quick history. Their first touchscreen phone was the 7710. And don't forget the N95, first one of a 5 megapixel camera. Massive, massive phone in terms of sales, very well received. Now in terms of the OS, the last Symbian phone announced in January was going to be POV 808, which leads us on to more on that partnership with Windows. Exciting times indeed. We've already seen just a taste of the latest Lumia phones, so let's focus on that on today's episode. Haha. -ha. Okay, this is something I'm very, very excited to hold in my hands. It's the Nokia Lumia 925, as they call it, a reinterpretation of the Nokia Lumia 920, and it is an absolute beauty to hold in my hands. This, of course, would be the flagship phone, being the most expensive, the most high-tech one which Nokia have. And you know what? It's certainly a worthy title holder to be really a flagship phone everything about it is a true beaut and just for clarity it comes in two different colors there's a gray version but we have here is the black version so what is enticing about this let's get down to business so the basic specs are it's got a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor inside. So it's pretty pretty nifty if you ask me. The battery, 2000 mAh, maybe a slight concern if you're really gonna be charging away on it all day, just browsing this or browsing that, but I'm sure that's negligible depending on the person's individual usage. And I have to point this out, this is notably lighter. It's about 139 grams versus a 920, which was slightly over 180. So you're talking, give or take, 50 grams in terms of difference. It is also thinner. So I'm quite impressed with that. I mean, it feels nice in my hand. Perhaps the 920 was a little bit larger. This one, for me, is absolutely perfect to slot into my jean pocket, etc. They also say that the camera sensor is better on this as well. So obviously, that's going to be a massive, massive help if you're a real camera addict like I am. As for the screen, it's really crystal clear. The pure HD technology is there, of course. It's a 4.5 inch screen, in case you're wondering. And it doesn't go quite edge to edge, but it certainly comes very close. And I will stand by it. This is the best looking in terms of the operating system and the screen itself combining together. It is an absolute beauty just playing around with this. But of course, that's just the hardware aspect all packed within this aluminum unibody case. What about the actual software? I'll be honest, there hasn't been that much in terms of difference for the actual Windows 8 OS on this device. I mean, the glance screen like such, now you can actually double tap to get to unlock the phone like such as opposed to before when you had to use the power button on the side right here. For me, that's a little bit more useful. Double tap, opens up, just view exactly what you want to see. Apart from that, if you look at it, it looks pretty much the same. Perhaps in the future, we'll get more updates, but right now, I still think it looks beautiful. There's not really much to change. I don't think it looks dated, unlike some other OSs, and it still looks so fresh and clean. And if you're using an Xbox or Windows 8 PC, then you should be really acclimatized to this pretty fast, if you ask me. Uh, the camera is still outstanding. There's now an added uh, glass layer here, lens itself, the five plastic ones on the sensor. So it adds an extra field for you as such in terms of clarity of picture. Better image stabilization as well, dual LED flash, and a couple of new functions internally which you can play around with like best shot, etc. So it's plenty of fun to be had, and the camera is still one of the best that you'll see out there in the smartphone market. All in, I have to admit, I think this is a fantastic phone. It's 
been beefed up spec wise but the body itself has been beefed down to a better size to fit in my pocket as opposed to the 920. I mean there are some gripes about it, 16 GB version is the only one that we have here, no expandable storage means 16 GB, well of course there's something like SkyDrive you could use as well but you're relying more on a data connection be it on your telco, on your Wi-Fi for additional storage which I've never liked to be honest, not a big fan of that. But also just going to put it down for a second, if you like recording a video just remember that the video itself records in mono which is a bit of a bummer but hey if you're not really into the video that's probably not going to be that much of a deal breaker for you overall if you're looking for the best windows 8 device out there you will be hard pressed to find anything better than this i absolutely think it's brilliant i would love to play around with it just a little bit more maybe i will steal it right now just me So what I think about this bad boy right here in my hands in conclusion, 925 is a great phone. If you're looking for a solid Windows 8 phone, probably the best Windows 8 phone you can buy out in the market, this would be it. The 920 for me was a little bit big. This one, just perfect for my jeans, which is what I'm usually wearing, or maybe even a suit pocket inside, etc. The size is nice, it's not too heavy. Like I said, it's lighter than the 920. There are some gripes, 16 GB is all we're gonna get here in Malaysia, the 32 GB option is not available, maybe it will be in the future. So perhaps if you use up a lot of memory, you'll be reliant on a Wi-Fi or your telco in order to access cloud storage of some form on the device. Other gripes, well, not much really. If you're really into video, well there's only mono recording for that, but I don't think that really matters too much and if you're not into video then you're probably not going to care at all. Overall though, this is a fantastic little device and I think I'm going to steal it right now. Just slip it in my pocket and hope nobody notices. Remember last week I had a chance to speak to the head of marketing in Nokia Pan Asia, Mr. Gary Chan? Well, he decided to sit down with us again, this time to talk more about the device that we just saw, the Nokia Lumia 925. Hi guys, it's me again, Cherish Liao, here at Swago at Surya KLCC. So once again with me, sitting next to me is Gary Chan, he's the Head of Marketing for Nokia Pan Asia. Gary, this time we're going to talk about Nokia Lumia 925, which is just recently launched in Malaysia. That's right, Cherish. So, Nokia 925, can you tell us a little bit about the design story? What is the design story behind the upgrade from let's say 920 and 925 what is the biggest difference that we can see seven months ago we introduced the nokia lumia 920 which was the most innovative smartphone that we have brought to malaysia and in it people love the fact that we utilize the polycarbonate material to protect the device and to build the housing and with the polycarbonate material we were able to introduce very bright inherent colors in the device so consumers love the yellow device for example which even though they have used it for months and scuff it, it still maintains its beauty because it is firstly polycarbonate mm -hmm. and secondly, the color goes right through all the way and through the device. But there are a certain segment of consumers who wanted something a bit more premium looking. They would give us a feedback that the, the 920, a bit too heavy because we utilize the polycarbonate material as well. So this is our first Lumia device mm -hmm. which utilizes aluminium in the housing. Okay. So as you can see around the 925, there yeah. is this aluminium band. Yes. This aluminium band it doesn't make the phone just look beautiful. Mm -hmm. It also serves as the antenna of the device to enhance the reception of the device. So the entire phone itself is like an antenna. That's, that's what correct. You're trying to say. That's right. And okay. this allows you to hold the phone in any way and get great reception out of the device. Okay. It also makes the phone look very beautiful it and is. very, very premium yeah, looking. Yeah. 
So would you say that because based on your description, you say premium look, and then there are certain segment of the market is demanding for something that is uh, less colorful and then more reflecting their corporate feel. That's right. So does it doesn't mean that your target market will be more to the those segment that is uh, working with uh, probably higher income level. Well, if you look at the price of the device, which yeah. is RM1799, which we're introducing here in Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, we believe that it appeals directly to those people who are, you know, corporate people mm -hmm. and uh, who want the most and the best out of their devices. And we believe that the 925 will complement their lifestyle perfectly. Moving a little bit further in, we talk about the software. So yeah. we talk about Windows 4.9. So what has been Nokia's effort or contribution or probably R&D look into in terms of trying to innovate on Windows 8 platform, then at the same time, bring up the kind of truly Nokia experience to the consumer market. There are two areas which we've been working on from a software side of things. Our engineering teams literally sit side by side together with the Microsoft engineering teams to actually make this happen. One of the areas that we are very proud of is our imaging leadership. Mm. So, you know, we've uh, announced the uh, Lumia Perfect. 1020 already, and in the 1020, it is our imaging flagship. But we took uh, one of the important parts of the 920, which is the optical image stabilization technology, mm -hmm. and then we further improved on the camera array for the 925. And it is this same lens construction that actually goes into the Lumia 1020 as well. Mm -hmm. So with the lens array here, we have got uh, extra lens inside it, a six glass lens, which we have put into there to improve the sharpness both in daylight and in low light conditions. But hardware is only as good as the software, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we've worked very hard with the Microsoft team mm -hmm. in being able to enhance the software user experience for the camera software to utilize all the features of the hardware that we have put in. So with the 925, as well as part of the Lumia Amber update of the software, mm -hmm. we're introducing the Nokia Smart Camera. This Nokia Smart Which Camera is, is a, a way that you can just simply take a photo and when you take the photo, it actually takes 10 shots at one time okay. very, very quickly. Uh -huh. And then at the end of the day, after you finish your shooting, you can go back into the photo and you can make changes to the photo. Perhaps in one phase, if they took both of us, they would, I was not smiling in that. They very simply be able to replace my face with the face from another photo, another shot that was taken, so that we were always both smiling. Or if we are, for example, moving and we want to take a, um, an action shot of the scenery of the people moving around us, mm -hmm. very simple, yeah, you can go back in and then determine, hey, I want to see five frames of me moving in that picture and we can even play with the fade in and fade out effects. So it comes with dual core 1.5 gigahertz. That's correct. Do you think it's powerful enough to drive a smart camera, to drive here maps, uh, based on your uh, experience, probably the R&D, your research and developers team, they already look into it saying that, hey, this is the exact power that will be able, or more, that will be able to drive the entire user experience. This uh, Windows Phone 8 has been optimized for dual core processors. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that there was a balance of power and battery... Um, battery life. A preservation, I that's see. right. The processor takes up a lot of energy. Yep. And what we wanted to do was to deliver the best experience possible that was fast, that was fluid, mm -hmm. and that the consumers feel that there is no lag time between the response, Thanks. as well as power management. Mm. And we believe that the dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor that's on the Lumia 920 provides that right balance. Okay, so to wrap up our interview, I would like to just uh, ask you throughout this question, what is the core philosophy for Nokia in uh, addressing the consumer demand? Firstly, uh, we want to make sure that we have the right device at every price point for every consumer need. Nokia does not believe that one size fits all. So we have got devices with buttons on them and full screen devices. But one of the things that we are very consistent about is how Nokia differentiates the experiences. And we've been working very closely looking at the consumer feedback and what the competition is doing, what, reson what is resonating well with the public and what are the needs of people from both the business, productivity, entertainment angles. And then we try to look at the areas where Nokia is strong in. So we really believe that in terms of hardware and software design, that is an area that we can want to continue to lead in. Then we also have got the 
explore and navigate uh, as one of the pillars where we want to differentiate because we, we know that uh, the internet has the, the questions about what has been answered by Google, mm -hmm. who has been answered by Facebook, but the next question that needs to be answered is where and the answer is here. And so uh, we believe that with these assets in place that we'll be able to bring the best smartphone experiences to our consumers. Uh, thank you, Gary, for your time thank while you, holding Nokia Lumia 925. So I can really feel the difference in terms of the weight already because uh, I already tested the 720 and uh, we have the 920 in the office. So it is really light and it really does feel premium. So if you guys is curious about Nokia Lumia 925, please do check it out at Nokia store. And so that's it for this time around. So I'll see you again. This is Cherish Leo. One of the things that consumers really liked about Here Maps is the city lens feature that we had. And what we did with the newest version of Here Maps was that we integrated city lens into Here Maps. So the new version of Here Maps on the 925 is called Here Maps with Life Sight. Life Sight allows you to be able to see a view of the world around you from within the Maps application. So I'm going to show you how it works. All you have to do is simply launch the Maps um, application that I have on my desktop here. When you launch the Maps application, you're going to be able to see your typical map experience. Yeah, yeah. But what you're going to be able to do as well is that you will see that there's this thing called the eye down yeah, there. Yes. And when you click the eye, you turn on into the live site mode. Okay. And how the live site mode works is that it will find out what's the, pl the, the places around you and you have got an augmented reality experience here. When you place it down, you see more of the map. Okay. And when you bring it up, you actually see the places and the things around you and you can actually flip and draw them closer to you and actually find out what they, they are. So in this case, it's the Avenue K shopping center that we have around here. And I can actually click on it and get information about this particular mall that's around me. Okay. In addition to this, you know, you can see that um, over here, th there's this information that's being syndicated from Lonely Planet. We can get a lot of information about this, this location. If you go and look at Avenue K on the smartphone and I get out of the live site mode for example, mm -hmm. and we go back to this particular, the, the regular top-down mode, you can see that over Avenue K, there is actually this little icon here. Shopping? And when you click on this little icon here, yes. it actually allows you to see a directory from a floor to floor of inside Avenue K Mall. Okay. And this is only possible because we work very closely with the Microsoft team again to bring these experiences to life utilizing the Windows Phone 8 platform. And both the imaging capability as well as the mapping capability we have now opened it up to developers as well to build on top of these platform pieces that we have created. Video games kill the radio star. I don't know what I'm trying to sing there. I'm making up lyrics on the spot. But I'm going to talk about video games though. Specifically games available for Nokia Lumia on the 925. I'm going to play around and see exactly how it goes. Let's focus on some games here for the Lumia. Now, I'm going to start off with one of my favorite hobbies in the entire world, one of my favorite sports, which is football. Now, if you've ever played a football game, be it on a PS3, an Xbox 360, or any other console, you'll probably be a FIFA fan. Nowadays, it's recognized as probably the best 
in terms of how entertaining it is and how realistic the actual game is. And of course, EA Sports have not just sat around and made it for the PlayStation through the Xbox. It's of course on the mobile devices as well, and it's transferred quite well here onto the Lumia. That's one player that does not need any explanation who he is. It's Lionel Messi, in case you're wondering. So in terms of how realistic it is, you obviously can't compare to PS3, but it's done a very good job on the mobile system itself. Now, one advantage that FIFA has over a lot of its competitors is it's an official game from FIFA, licensed by FIFA, which means you get real teams. You know, there's another game whereby you're playing as Manchester Red or Manchester Blue simply because they don't have the rights to use that team. You won't find that with FIFA 13, and that's why I really enjoy it, because I like taking hold of my favorite teams or my favorite players or replaying scenarios in the past. Now, once we open up the game, as you can see, I'm just gonna do a quick kickoff just not even gonna bother choosing who the teams are. It's Manchester United versus Barcelona, in case you're wondering. All right, so once you're ready, you can start loading up. Now, obviously, if you don't have the trial version, this is actually a trial version. There's a lot of things you can do. You have more access to more teams, there's online play, etc., and it's really optimized, and FIFA have consistently stepped it up in terms of gameplay year by year. The attacking play is pretty smooth. There's the proper dribbling featuring the keypad, the joypad here. So once you're passing, I'm Wayne Rooney and I'm running around. And having this here reacts very well on the screen and allows me to really have some fun with this game. Probably my favorite game that you can play on a mobile device, but that's my personal preference. Not necessarily because it's the best game, but because it's a football game. You know one superhero I think everybody loves has to be Spider-Man. That's the game I'm playing here right now, The Amazing Spider-Man, which as you can probably tell from the title is based on the movie with Andrew Garfield which came out uh, not too long ago. They have a sequel coming out as well. Let's focus more on the game. Now I remember playing on the PS2, Spider-Man 2 I think it was, the film with Tobey Maguire and the game blew me away. It was a real open world. I could swing around the whole of Manhattan, which is where Spider-Man lives in the movie-verse and in the comics, and just have fun. Not necessarily follow the storyline, but, you know, I just like swinging around and just running around having a lot of fun. Now this one really reminds me of that in terms of graphics. It just shows how far games have come in the past couple of years. And as I swing around Manhattan, it takes me back to the days when I was playing this in the PS2. And I just think it's absolutely stunning. Now it's not just all about swinging around Manhattan, it's also about the gameplay. Now this has been written by, if you've watched Battlestar Galactica, the reimagined version, it's the same guy. So he's got this brand new epilogue story, there's reimagined villains in the Spider-Man universe, and if you're a comic book fan, it's something worth checking out. As you can tell, the graphics themselves, running here on Lumia, are really, really awesome. And I'm just having fun, not even following the storyline at times, just running around and swinging and pulling off these acrobatic moves, which we know Spider-Man can do. If you're a comic book fan, it's a game worth checking out on Lumia. Yeah! Ah, oh, you're Gobin. Bimab Crozen. Ah, Karu! <laughs> The final game which I'm going to show you today is The Sims. Yeah, you know The Sims. I've always loved playing The Sims on my console. I mean, creating this world where I can be some sort of creative master to everybody, I absolutely love it. An overlord of sorts. Now I can do it on a mobile device in a really different way. This in fact is The Sims Medieval. That's all in the name. This does not in any way take place in a current timeline. It is all set in the 15, 1400s. And it's a lot of fun. So it's more of a base sort of strategy where you're building up your village and you can create your own heroes and negotiate with others. You can even go fishing. Now, in terms of just setting up how the base really is or your village, there's other elements. When I said your heroes, you can make sure that your wizard has lots of magic. You can make sure that other characters, they all build up like whatever needs to be done there. For example, the Iron Forger will bake weapons, etc., etc., etc. So in that sense, it's a lot of fun. It's something different, it's something we don't really see 
in the world of The Sims. In terms of how the gameplay is, as you can see right there, pretty basic. You can zoom in and out. This is just the start of the game itself. I created a new sim just to play around. And as you can see, that is my main character's home. And you can rotate the cameras, obviously. You can go and see how everything is. And right now, my village is very small. It needs to be built up. The question is, are you up for the challenge for doing so? If you're a fan of all these sim-like games, you should enjoy it because of the whole different setting, medieval, and the concept of building up heroes as opposed to a whole town of normal people. Give it a go. Gotta give a big shout out once again to Renoma Cafe Gallery where we are right now for hosting us as we shot this very special episode. And a big thank you to Nokia for lending us Alumia 925 and previously the Asha 501 as well. Great shows are going in a good direction. I love playing around with the Windows 8 device which they have. Really is one of the benchmarks for all the smartphones out there. And here's hoping they continue to progress in order to keep the competition strong in the mobile phone world because it can get pretty tough. And we as the consumers just want to benefit from anything innovative. Find us on Facebook and Twitter. My name is Adam Clovis and we'll see you same time, same place next week for another episode of Gadget Nation.